Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Simulation Soccer League. Today, we are going to be doing match day number eight of Division One. It's going to kick off the second half of the season officially. We're through all the group stages. We're through the first half of the season, and we're looking forward to seeing what the second half has to bring us. I am Laser. I am joined today by TVC. And TVC, what is it that you are most looking forward to in the second half of the season here? You're going to hate me, Laser, but I'm looking forward to seeing... Uh... One, who gets relegated with Athena, and two, how well AC Romana does. They're really the wild card in this equation this year, and it's uh, going to be interesting to see where they finish in the first year in top flight. Yeah, they uh, their goalkeeper has significantly struggled in the past few matches, and they are uh, struggling to score as well after a very good start. So we'll see how that ends up happening. Ten matches total been played for them so far. About half have gone well and half haven't, so... We will see what ends up happening with that. That is the last match of the day, though. Our first match of the day is between Tokyo and Reykjavik, with Reykjavik currently sitting third in the table on goal difference, and Tokyo is tied with Reykjavik on 11 points, but they do have a minus two goal difference and sit in fifth. So Reykjavik's one of those teams where uh, I'm not sure. Uh... I mentioned wildcard earlier. I still feel like they are bigger favorites to stay up this year than AC Romana, certainly with the roster that they've constructed here and uh, with a lot of veterans on that uh, on that team, right? So they're no strangers to Division One. I, I suspect they'll be able to stay up uh, come year end. However, on the other side of the pitch, it's Tokyo. Tokyo last year were title contenders. This year, not pretenders, not contenders, somewhere in the middle, right? And that's exactly where they sit over at fifth. You mentioned earlier, right? That uh, log jam for third to fifth there. Uh, we'll see yeah. if they can put some space between uh, them and the uh, other middle packs. But uh, looking forward to uh, an overall good day. Yeah, and uh, looked like a shot there that was deflected off of a central defender. Uh, it is both teams tied on 11 points, first and second, but both on 14 as Sterling barely misses that one. Well, Sterling didn't miss the shot. Sterling did not get his hand on the save because he didn't have to. Anyway, moving forward, words are hard. Uh, <laughs> It's a 4-3-3 from Tokyo, which is a bit different than what we are used to seeing from them. We're used to seeing a 4-2-3-1 with two defensive mids. As here's an opportunity for Rise, and that's in. Sky Rise has scored six, sixth minute. Yeah, just as quickly as that goal happened, uh, it's uh, quickly on the scoreboard as well for Tokyo. Six minutes into this game, five and a half, really. Uh, in in well unfortunate turnover i guess incorrect pass there's a lot yeah. of things you could call it but the goal is really what tokyo is going to call it here yeah and just really well timed to run by sky rise there to get past the diver so we have Great. tokyo lined up in or sorry it's Reykjavik lined up in the fortune three in that one. yes Yes, Tokyo, uh, I had just been saying they like to play that 4-2-3-1 with the D-mids, and then uh, Sky Rise had enough of that and decided to draw our attention away from it. But it looks as though uh, Reykjavik are employing the 4-2-3-1 with two central mids, rather than the two defensive mids. Yeah, a bit of a outright more aggressive formation from Reykjavik. Uh, it uh, at times has seemed like they've played on the back foot, something that they've put themselves into uh, and it worked out for them I, they've oftentimes controlled the uh, the offense in games uh, this time around it's not uh, been so lucky for them as we're 30 minutes in well I, I shouldn't say lucky it's tactical that uh, their control yeah and they have about the same number of shots just they haven't been quality shots they've been easily saved by Rue this year's a cross put in and can't get that in can Bobby and now it's Joker in for Andrews, and Visser gets in front of that. That was very threatening. We'll see if Tokyo can answer, though. Here's Visser with a run, tackled away. 
That was Good. a tackle. Uh, I thought he just messed it up. Yeah. That, it did confuse me, as many things do, but that, that Rube is six miles out of his box. I'm glad Zemlos is not on this chassis, please it. <laughs> oh, here's a... Uh, Kaido was off, does not go for it. Good call there. But that is leading to a Reykjavik... Cap Turnover. Nope. Or pass. Rise to Kaido, and it's right to Sterling. Yeah, unfortunate. We've seen Kaido curl those into the top corner. Not there. Yeah. Casual back to Joker, back to Casual. There's Oak, but Soderberg gets a foot to it, and he's offside anyway. The referee decides to blow it uh, as an offside instead of letting that play out. Interesting decision by the referee there. Yeah. Not as interesting as Mike Rupp's yellow card, though. Rupp with the yellow, that is... I feel like we see a lot of yellows from Mike Rupp. That may just be my imagination, though. I wonder if someone can go and check the index and let us know after the game. I do mean you, the viewer. <laughs> so uh, we said at halftime, clean one nothing for Tokyo. I think it's been deserved. Yeah, yeah we've uh, neither side has really had a whole lot of opportunities. It's just, I mean, as per usual, one team has finished and the other team has not. But Reykjavik has the firepower to be very good. They are by no means out of this. Yeah, I, I highlighted the yellow card earlier on Rupp because he is a center back. And uh, as we've seen time and time again, having even one of those two pairings on a yellow could mean an easy opportunity. Yeah, and Rupp is actually, that's only his second, if any, if second, if that, maybe his first yellow of the season. Corner from Tokyo to go anywhere, but Nessi is known for crossing, puts it in, and that's headed out. It's been a, des um, not deservedly, the wrong word there. It's been a notably more tame season for Linnea Nessi. Uh, she's not had the offensive production that she, uh, last year that she had. Uh, well, that she had last year. Here's Kaido back to Soderberg. They had a good opportunity there, but couldn't crash the box soon enough. Messi with the cross again, and Scarpetta puts it out. Visser intercepts that, intended for Andrews. Visser cross put in, the diver gets there, and now it's Messi again on the opposite side. Well, we're almost playing tennis here. And Sterling finally makes the save as the cross finds purchase. I will say, though, despite my earlier comment about a lack of production this year, it's not been all for a lack of effort, as we saw there. Yeah, Messi is uh, never one you're going to see slacking off, that's for sure. Soderberg has an opening, shoots, and Sterling able to make that save pretty cleanly. Yeah, bit of a messy shot from Soderberg there. Uh, you kind of expect better from their chief penalty taker. Yeah, it was a difficult angle off of a dribble from the off foot. Here's Joker in for Bobby, back for Oak, shoots Ooh. long, and Rube gets across. I don't know if he needed to, but it will be a corner for Reykjavik. That had some curl to it. I think that might have it gone did. in. It may be. It's so hard to tell half the time. And the other half of the time, you think they're onside and they're not. Oh, that too. Yoker for Bobby. Rupp gets in front of it. Rube doesn't even have to make the save. Uh -oh. Guerra bounces it off. Casual picks it up. Cross in. Soderberg gets there, and that's going to go out for a throw. That doesn't happen too often. Ricky Bobby losing out on a header there to uh, Helena Soderberg. Yeah, Bobby, the current league leader in goals, has a three-goal lead over Owen44 and Jeffrey Levert both sitting on 8, while Bobby has 11. He's going to look to make it 12 here. Although he is playing from a winger position, so maybe not. Well, we know Bobby can use his head. 
Let's see if yeah. today he can use his brain just a little bit better. Messy cross. Kaido gets there, but it's over. That winger position known to rely on a little more creativity. And Guerra was down just there, but he's back up now, so nothing to worry about there. The best physios in the world work in the SSL. It's why we cannot afford VAR or decent refereeing. <laughs> Very true. Oh, Tokyo, this looks promising. Kaido cuts in, then out on the Tissier. Cross in for a soggy curl. And Rise, header, Sterling gets there. Rise just able to walk into these. Uh, it's been yeah. a bit of a bag dip for the crosses. Yeah, Rise. Well, I've used this joke several times, but Rise certainly towers over his opposition. Has another shot saved by Sterling there. Well, comparative to uh, what is that, Claudio Serpeta? No, I think it's Roberto Serpeta there. Uh, he uh, he's a good foot and a half taller than him. Yeah. Yeah, Rise. I think is seven six or something like that. It is Roberto. Claudio, I believe, is on loan at London this season. You would think I'd know that. <laughs> I believe they are. Oh, that's dangerous. Tokyo is playing with fire for the second time. The third time is probably going to get him. But they're building out of the back now. Asagi up to Rise. Rise doesn't really have anywhere. Attempted through ball for Kaido, but Letizia is on it. Oh, boy. And now Reykjavik is playing with fire. Yeah, Sucks really made a bit of a mess of that one. You don't see that too often. Yeah. Now see, and that's in! It's Asagi with making it 2-0 Tokyo on the Nessie cross, and they've been looking for that one all match. Project State will be thrilled with that. That's his first goal of the year. Yeah, and just a really good one. Nessie picks it up off of Guerra. And just, yeah, Sterling uh, didn't even see her coming. As much as you uh, you want to have those beautiful long curling goals, you could you take those tap ins when they come. Oh yeah. As we see, Bobby has actually gone into a negative sit or a sub six rating currently. That is not something we're used to seeing. Cross in from Joker, headed out. Bobby just shut down by Tokyo so far. Although, here's an opportunity. Casual uh -oh. on for Bobby. One on one. Oh! Shoots rude. Made a match of that. Yeah. A chip or opposite post, and I think he has it. Goes to emphasize that he is indeed having a bad day. Yeah. There's Bobby again. On for casual, but Soderbergh got there first. Sometimes when FM decides you're having a bad day, like, you're really having a bad day. <laughs> Yeah, or, you know, a bad two or three months, depending. Oh, that's a bad turnover. Andrews picks it up. Letizia is on the wing. Soderbergh covering. Cross in. Bobby, straight out, Rube. And with only three minutes left, that is going to be that. Rikovic might get one, but I don't think they're going to take the, uh, the one point. Oh. oh, Bobby missed about a foot to the left. I'm not going to say it again, but those who are watching, rewind about 30 seconds for my thoughts on that. Yeah. And there's the whistle. It's a 2-0 win for Tokyo. That will jump them uh, provisionally into a tie for the league lead. Though we do have Buenos and Sao Paulo yet to play. Tokyo is now even on goal difference after that. They were uh, previously down two, but now they've drawn back even. That'll be a big relief to them. Reykjavik, on the other hand, just really didn't have the best day in the office. They're still a uh, positive 11 goal difference. They have 11 points. They're two games clear of the relegation zone, so could be a lot worse for them, but I think that they are uh, a little bit upset that they weren't able to get at least one point out of that. Uh, I mean, maybe a goal. I, I, I could commit to them deserving a goal for sure. Um, whether they deserve a point of that, uh, I think Tokyo definitely deserved their two goals for sure. Uh, and at the end of the match, sure. it uh, it did look like that Tokyo just a little bit outclassed uh, Reykjavik. And that happens when you're a newer team in the league. Division 1, that is. 
Yeah. Yeah, I know they didn't play as though they deserved the the one point or the three today, but I know expectations were high coming into it. Hopes were high, at least. Absolutely, but uh, for Reykjavik, you have to remember that Tokyo uh, have been, for multiple seasons, flirting with the title. Uh, yeah. And you don't get there by being a bad team. It's, it's yeah. just facts. Especially at home. As we move into our next match, it's going to be Sao Paulo, currently second in the table on goal difference. They will be going up against Hollywood, who is, uh, well, dare I say, they're having a down year. Yeah, no, only two teams go down. At the same time, two teams go down. And right now, Hollywood looking like they are in the danger zone. They're in a fight for their lives. And uh, normally they're used to fighting for silverware. Yeah, they are currently only two points clear of Ramana. And uh, Ramana does have the current head-to-head -head tiebreaker, 1-3-0 against them in, I believe, match day three. But that is not the current focus. It is on Sao Paulo, who have been much better at scoring and attacking since the acquisition of 0-44 in the offseason. Who is uh, Sao Paulo is in a four three three narrow diamond, I think. I can double check for you. I do know that uh, Hollywood are in a four three three asymmetric. Yes, I believe they've run the same thing all season. Maybe mistaken on that. They've run different variants of it, but it's the different. It's the same positional formation, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So Paulo was building. Well, they were building. That was a. The through ball was a good bit far, and the heretic will get his hands on it. And you did call it right earlier. It is a 4 4 2 Neuro Diamond. Well, I called it a 4 3 3, but I really can't tell with those narrow formations. Taka with an opportunity, and Anderson gets across to make the save. Oh, we are blowing past this game so far. Which is, in comparison to the last two, a little surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood, Sao Paulo, uh, both teams absolutely packed with playmakers. Lian Kwai, Tiki Taka, Elmas the Heretic. The entire back line of Hollywood has always been very solid, very staunch. And then uh, Ellen44, uh, Dorian Mexican, Matthew Mayhem. Yannick Anderson, who makes that save from Negatoro by Redona. Action-packed game is one that I would have certainly expected, but as yet, we haven't seen it. Because there's an Ancha cross. Kofi Ancha, perhaps one of the most notable Sao Paulo players. Previous to... Oh, and there's Biscuit with it in! Funyuns with the assist, and that was just a first-timer off the volley from Biscuit. Beating the Heretic. You wonder if the rain messed up the Heretic's jump there. Let's see if he slips. I don't know the exact uh, grass in these stadiums. Could very well be AstroTurf. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just onside. And just past the outstretched arms. And Sao Paulo goes up early. On sure that was dangerous. Liankai lurking. Yeah. Kwai and then Taka right there as well if Mayhem had messed up that clearance. Let's get back to Imbrimovic forward for Newman. Newman going to take a shot and skies it. Had a good look. Not a great touch, though. Yeah, had a little bit of open space there, but it was shut down extremely quickly and... Got to take a shot with what you have at that point. This Funyuns cross goes to nothing. And here's Nagatoa Maradona on a break. Has Taka with. Taka's offside. Now back on. All the way to the near wing for Maradona. And just bounces it off of Mayhem. It'll be Anderson coming out to claim that. Disappointing finish to that chance. Anderson skies it clear. Mayhem to 44. The Heretic with the save. I 
Bunyans with the corner again, and it's headed out again. We'll chase it down. And that's that. Right back into it, though, so we're not quite out of it yet. But yeah, I suspect we won't be for a long time. Was the Heretic with two clearances, quite long, 30 seconds between. Gives it right to Anderson, who I'm not sure what the what play was there. What are we watching? There. I am. Um, oh. Something. Here's 44, and it's blocked by the Heretic. Great agility there. Oh, they're playing with fire. That that was a highlight. Yeah, I uh, that was something. Forty-four with that good intercept, but it's a one-on-two. Puts it over for Biscuit. Go back to forty-four into Newman, out to Biscuit. Ooh. Shoots long, and that is wide. Difficult shot, but not a bad go at it from the angle. Yeah, um, I, I don't know the exact instructions for Sao Paulo here, but it sure seems like they've been told to let it fly whenever they have some daylight. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sao Paulo is a team that frequently relied on uh, volume of shots rather than accuracy previous to getting 0-44, so it remains to be seen whether or not they have kind of abandoned that tactic in favor of the... A very effective tactic of just relying on 44 as here's Ancho on the wing cross in for 44 and we missed well not every shot can be a tap in true mayhem cross for 44 Costanza blocks and that's a quarter and if we've watched Owen 44 enough through the years you've realized the only goals he's really good at scoring are the tap ins <laughs> True, but to be fair, everyone is good at those goals. This is true, but historically, when you ask only 44 to shoot anywhere other than the front of the net, he doesn't score very much. Yeah. Newman with a shot there, but didn't have a whole lot of speed on it, and the Heretic gets to it quickly. And we are finally nearing halftime. We only have 11 shots in the match, but it feels like we've seen about 30. So it has been action-packed back yeah. and forth on both ends. I definitely cursed it when I said there was nothing going on early in this match, and the XG chart kind of reflects that, but then that first goal came on, and uh, and the game came to life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, you can't say that Sao Paulo doesn't deserve their lead. They very much do. They've had some good opportunities, um, and it really Hollywood haven't bothered Yannick Anderson. They've had some good, like, build-ups, but they haven't been able to convert those build-ups into chances. Honestly, is, uh, if I'm Hollywood here right now, I'd be very, very concerned. Because right now, it does not look like they are a team that is fighting to stay alive. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to agree. They look as though they're more just relying on their skill and... Uh, that can't get you everything. It's here's 44 with another opportunity. We just talked about it. Best at the chip ends. Almost had that, but the Heretic was a great save. Yeah, Heretic had to be sharp to that. Wise yeah, to the tricks of Scott Paulo. Mayhem goes long for Biscuit. 44 is there. Through ball for him, but not long enough. And he takes another long shot. As if to spite us up here in the box. I um I would bet money shoot on sight or so, um, oh, somewhere. Nearly in for Jero's header, but Anderson barely gets to it. Really good goalkeeper battle so far. Uh, Hollywood hasn't had a ton of chances. When they have, it's looked good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Four shots, four on target. Just none in the back of the net yet. Just gonna steal an adage from hockey here. Uh, they need to get more shots. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like they might here. Levert over to Lightning. Back to Levert. Forward in 10. Or no, it does go to possible. To Lightning to Kwai. Blocked by Ramirez. But possible recycles. Bounces off of Vansha. And that is a quarter. Gerard puts it in. 
mess of bodies, but the ball goes over the back of the net. Now let's see if Hollywood could find happy hour here. Those are two shots earlier. They're going to be looking for another couple here. Yeah. It took me way too long to figure out what you meant by happy hour. Oh, here's possible for Kwai. Kwai with an opportunity. Ah! Oh! Chipped it into the hands of Yannick Andrews. He's biffed that. That was, uh... Quite literally any other shot selection, you probably would have scored. Yeah, literally anything else. You take another half step and shoot, and that's probably in, but... Hollywood is definitely turning up the heat now, and Taka's on a run. Doesn't have anyone with him. Gonna come back for Lightning. First timer, and that's high and wide. He had time, too. He had time. Yeah. I can't fully blame that shot because it is very hard to beat Anderson. Catching him off guard is uh, probably your best chance of getting one in the net, but he didn't have to rush it quite that much. He could have set his feet, put it, put a curl on it. Well, Lee, to be able to get it on net, or get it in the net, you have to put it on net. <laughs> true. Very true. You can post it long, and that's going to go nowhere. Paulo the other way now. Yeah, and here's Ansha for Ibrimovic. Hollywood is not pressing at all this match. 44 is going to not score. Oh, I thought that was a Shirley. Waking in front of the net, Leisure. Yeah, but Heretic came out so far. <laughs> Newman for Mayhem for Funyuns who shoots, and that's not accurate. Credit to Heretic, though, he is an excellent keeper. Despite Hollywood's struggles this year, it has not been uh, for a lack of his effort. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Heretic has been quite solid. Uh, in fact, Hollywood has a positive three goal difference despite their uh, sole possession of sixth in the table. 44 is offside by a mile. And he missed that. Yeah, and missed. And ten minutes. Either team looking like they could put one in, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm hoping we get one from both sides, if I'm honest. Yeah. Sao Paulo is known for their late game antics. And certainly by now, Hollywood definitely deserve a goal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's 44 shoots. Stayed on somehow. And now it's Valor for Taka. Nagatoro out to Gerard, up to Taka. Has an opportunity, but Inclan is there. Not going to have an angle. Shoots, and it is a cross, maybe? Yeah, um, Anderson thought it was going to be a shot. We thought it was going to be a shot. He looked for the cross. And uh, it looked like his teammate thought it was going to be a shot, too, because he wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that wasn't intended to be a shot. And we are very near the end of the match, almost to the extra time. Hollywood with probably one of their last gasp efforts, and that's directly to the arms of Anderson. Yeah, and this is how you know why Hollywood have had one too many shots, because they no longer know what a shot looks like. <laughs> Very true. There's Funyuns on for 44. Long shot. Misses wide. Wasn't in front of the net, Laser. Yeah. It was closer that time. Here's Taka. Long ball. Doesn't go anywhere. And 20 seconds. It looks like it's going to be a Sao Paulo victory as Biscuit sends that out of play, and that's probably going to do it. 1 0 is the final. In Hollywood, Sao Paulo stealing in... Uh, is that in Hollywood? That is in Hollywood, yep. Yeah, okay. The LA. stands were red, so I was not quite sure, but... It is an away victory for Sao Paulo, who certainly deserved it. A ton of shots on target made the heretic do his job. But Hollywood falling 1-0. That's going to put a dent in... Uh, that's going to be a hard loss for them. Yeah, I think this is a bit of a resemblance of our, our earlier game, right? Uh, certainly, Sao Paulo could have had another goal. 
Um, but I think Hollywood absolutely deserved a goal this match. Uh, they didn't deserve the point, though. Yeah. I do think that they were solidly outplayed by Sao Paulo today, who just, in every facet, was excellent. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Hollywood played well, too. Uh, they did deserve a goal, in my perspective, but uh, certainly did feel like they were outplayed just a little bit. Yeah, I would agree with that. Not a bad match for Hollywood. Uh, it was from the attacking standpoint, but uh, they just never could really get their attackers going, and that was that was quite clear by the end of the match. Yeah, I think a little bit unlucky means, though, to score. Uh, to not score, that is. Yeah. And I was going to say that that means that Sao Paulo has a chance at being sole first after this match, but uh, Buenos Aires is playing Athenae, the team who has a negative 27 goal difference and has yet to score on the season. Or I'm sorry, that's incorrect. They have yet to win or get a point on the season. So it seems unlikely that today will be the day. We have seen Stranger. Indeed. Uh, Athena are always looking for their first win. Uh, well, not always. Uh, in this match, they are looking for their first win. Uh, they've not won this year. Have they drawn this year? Do they have a point? They do not have a point. They, uh, I believe, and this may be incorrect, but I believe that their closest loss was a 2-1 loss to uh, Sao Paulo last time out. I do recall them scoring a couple goals at one point in time, but I, th I think they lost that game like 4-2. Yes, that was against Catalonia, I believe. It's a 4-3-2, uh, or I'm sorry, 4-3-1-2 from Buenos, who will need to win here to retain their grip on the top of the table. And with from Athena, I don't know what to call whatever that was, so I'm just going to say a, a uh, asymmetric 4-2-4. I think Canada has just given us a name to call it at some point. Um, not like a actual name, but um, I think he has said it is a 4-1-1-3-1 with an offset striker. That's, uh, here's Pellet... Uh, that's probably French, so Pelletier? Pelletier. Pelletier. It's definitely not Pelletier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that much I knew, but I was at a loss otherwise. As long as you don't call it Pelletier, you're good. <laughs> Knight, Cross, and Duke. Didn't need to get a finger to it. Uh, I don't yeah. think he would have either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I couldn't quite tell if he lost. actually got that or not, but... We're 20 minutes in, and it's only one shot for each side. Night, well, I spoke, and Bueno's got another one. Maybe, maybe. We haven't seen the shot yet. This, and there it is! I did see... Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, here it is. Vandersloth in. It is! That's in for Vandersloth. Third shot, first goal, first on target. Bueno's with a 1-0 no lead. It's in with Vandersloth. Goal cool, number six for uh, the Sloth this year. That's just a good individual goal, really. Yeah, Brian Duke continues to remain lost this match. Yeah. Uh, he looked over the wrong shoulder. I mean, yeah. it happens. Um, he and uh, he and Kerrigan have been quite uh, similar. In being easily fooled, I thought we might have one there, but it is not Gorkov's free goes to nothing. And oh boy. Turnover. Brooks Patron to Vandersloth. Backs out. Gives it to Gorka for it for Torres. Torres shoots and that's in off the far post. Flag stays down so this is going to count. Franco Torres on the scoreboard here and uh, 30, 31 minutes into this half. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we've been flying through it. That's, uh, uh, he not naked him. He not naked him. Yeah, if, like... if, Duke, if Duke decides to use his hands, then he probably saves that. But alas. He not naked him. Someone highlight that. Stick that in the highlight clips. We hardly ever see a, a goalkeeper allow himself to be not naked. 
Yeah, I have a feeling it might not be the last time we see it this season. <laughs> King in for Bradford. Bradford puts it on for Panda, but goes too far, and that's going to be cleared along by Oakdown. Headed on from Shot Torres. Down. Henshaw makes that save, but didn't have to, naturally. It was close. Yeah. Yeah, it did make a save. It didn't count, but... And, I, well, I apologize. They have four shots on target, so Duke has made two saves. You know what? In in, in football, 50% is not actually a bad percentage. Yeah, this is very true. And that's now up to 60 as he saves that shot from Brooks Patron. And uh, to be cheeky about it, it applies to both footballs. Yeah. Well, I mean, depending on what position you're playing. Well, this is true, but I, I think we all think, in terms of percentage, similar things. Typically, you want to be above the 60 percent rate, and I think that yeah. applies to goalkeeping in uh, in soccer, football as well. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. The best keepers in the league usually sit around 85 to 90, so that 60 is not bad. Uh, above 60 is certainly accurate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to see an opening minute goal here, aren't we? Uh, Tali, no. nope, Tali biffed it. One too Tried many to passes. Yeah. Got a little cheeky with it. Looking for Tali probably could have shot there. He had a run, if, if I'm honest. He had he had the look. I think he beat the defense and just made one too many plays, which I'm as as a playmaker can't be too upset about. Yeah, Vandersloth opportunity going for two gets it. <sighs> wow, Edwin Vandersloth cooler than a cucumber there. Just outweighted by Duke. Yeah, yeah, that's the seventh on the season. And, I mean, just the back line of Athena opened up for Vandersloth there. And Duke couldn't get out far enough. He laid his body on the line quite literally. And oh, it's uh, Lind. Lind! Henrik Lind, Lind gets them back. Not over yet. Not over yet. Athena has scored. Hugo with the free got it to Lind. And that's, yeah. Lind got lost in the bodies, Oakdown couldn't find him, and just beaten at the near post. Beautiful set piece there from uh, the and I, and that, that's going to be a highlight for them. Absolutely. As Buenos is back on the attack, cross in, that's over. From Tali, I believe. Might have been Torres, one of the two. Well, Torres has already scored this match. I think it'd be nice to get Tally on the board. I think Tally has an assist, at the very least. Oakdown doing a little bit of a dance there with the ball. Yeah, getting fancy with it. Hasn't had much to do. Was beaten one of his two times. And Buenos is going to shoot here, eventually. Gorka for Tally to Vander Sloth and misses wide. He's offside. Kiyoshi Oakdown is, uh, I believe, actually of an English nationality, so um, I think it's appropriate to ask if he does get jiggy with it. <laughs> Bradford to Prince to Bradford. Shoots, and it's off the post! Oh, that was so close for Bradford. And it would have been a beautiful goal, too. Oakdown was absolutely beaten incredibly done to get that shot up there if it's I mean if it's an inch lower it might glance in off the bottom of the crossbar there that was you cannot be closer than that yeah I'm lucky there Athena oh here's Bradford again another opportunity bounces it off of Oak down and it's gonna be a corner Bradford really turning it up here And Hugo to put it in and assist off of a set piece already. That bounced off of Oakdown and back into the scrum and then got cleared. That was 
yet again, very close. That was an incredible save from Oak down there, a diving uh, hand to the ball, I think? I Either a hand or a face, I couldn't tell. Might have pulled a shot Sterling. Yeah. Two yellows for Buenos is very interesting. Is Torres with an opportunity gives it to Tali. Tali is... Oh, Duke! I call it. Tali makes it three. Oh, dear. I did call it. I said I'd love to see Imo Tali get on the score sheet today. And, uh, well, you know, nothing like a belated birthday present. Thanks! Yeah, that's, uh, Duke did not fall over fast enough. Gravity did not do its job. Well, I mean, I don't know if I agree with that. It's certainly raining, but I don't know if that's the tears of the Athenai fans. <laughs> ben Shaw, oh, no. power <laughs> pop. That is Torres with a double. This might get ugly quick. <sighs> yeah, well... To the United credit, they only have 10 minutes left to go, which means that for about 70, 75 minutes, they were very competitive, and yeah. then they weren't. <laughs> yeah, and that one is not Duke's fault. Torres just perfectly places that off of the redirect. Difficult to say for any keeper, no matter who it is, but uh, if you take a look at the XG, it is one and a half goals for Buenos, and yet they have five in the back of the net. Yeah, a couple of those have been clinical strikes from uh, Van der Sloth, but they have been clear-cut chances. They've been earned by Buenos Aires. Absolutely. I think five is not a... Oh. I was about to change it to six, but that is a great save from Brian Duke. Yeah, and uh, one goes to his way there. The uh -oh. Brooks Patron Torres looking for the hat trick. Nothing doing, and it's going to be a corner. Not out of it yet. And that goes out for a throw, and we'll see that throw. Brooks Patron for Penshaw, Gorkuff, Jeeves. Jeeves skies it. And uh, the Athenai fans are absolutely nowhere to be found behind that goal. Vandersloth biffed that one. Duke does well. Picks it up. Vandersloth, one touch too many. And Duke is going to hold it as long as he possibly can. He's got no options. His defense is being uh, pressured so intensely. Yeah. Has to just get rid of it. And Athena are back in their end. And <laughs> they don't have anywhere to go. And shot for Torres. Torres misses wide. Blows the chance at the hat trick. Had a wide open shot there, and uh, I have a feeling Duke is just going to clear it long and hope that his team can keep it away from him. Look at this! There's five men from Buenos Aires lined up on that back line, just waiting for him to touch the ball. <laughs> yeah, Buenos yeah, certainly on the attacking foot in this match, and a 40% for Brian Duke at the end of the day, 50% for his opposing keeper. So. All in all, could have been much worse, but uh, Buenos Aires certainly deserved to win that match. A bunch of clear-cut chances. Well, a two is more than we typically see, I feel like. I feel like it's usually only one per side or so. And, uh, yeah, Buenos thoroughly deserving the win. They are, again, at the top of the table on goal difference above Sao Paulo. And Athena will drop to a negative 31 goal difference. Just because this is important to me, uh, they, I think I did have 51% possession of the ball today, and I know yeah. that they got scored on five times, but 51 is better than 49. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, this is I, very true. I don't mean to be patronizing at all. I'm, I'm a big believer in possession of the ball, and uh, you need to have the ball to score. Right? Yeah. So if you can prevent the opponent from having the ball, then typically it's a little harder for them to score. But Ozer is apparently no, not needing too much of it to be able to score five goals. But it's a solid philosophy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
And that will bring us into the final match of the day. It's going to be Catalonia and Romana currently I, sitting fifth and seventh in the I table. didn't intend it, but now that we're here, I'm going to say I absolutely intended this. Uh, the team in which plays a lot of possession f uh, football and which follows a very similar philosophy uh, is actually Catalonia. Yeah, Catalonia does prefer to just hold the ball, wait for opportunities, play very cautiously, but not afraid to take chances if they present themselves. Patience, they... possession, and pressing. That's the key, uh, the big three Ps of, uh, of total football, if I remember correctly. I do believe so. And that's the look at the updated table. Not a whole lot of movement can happen. Uh, Romano with a win would jump Hollywood. Otherwise, Catalonia would go to uh, fourth over Reykjavik. As we get underway, it's a typical 4-2-3-1 from Romana. It is a 4-3-1-2 from Catalonia. And Yarvin in with an early attack back to Sherwood. Plays a 1-2 cross. And that does not go anywhere. Akimoto bounces it off of Smart. Schweinsteiger missed out on that header, and DeFlore had to collect it for him. Yeah, that was a... <laughs> a little nervy. <laughs> yeah. Certainly an interesting beginning to the match. Yeah, um, I'm not quite sure why we saw that. That was nothing. <laughs> yeah. But here's Catalonia now on an attack. Maple up the line, gets to the line, cross in, and held by Kerrigan. Who strayed very nervously close to his line. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Romano looking for their first attack. Imuatu back to DeFlor. Goes for a run on the near side, cross in for Anavier, heads it into the arms of Gunnarsson. Now, interesting... The floor was completely unmarked. Mueller is a midfielder. Uh, that that right back was nowhere to be seen. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't recall exactly who the right back. Is. I believe it's Vince. It's been Vince. Has been for many years. Ah, uh, yes, true. Matthew for Nunez on the. Ah, uh, there he is. Right. He's shocking. Schwanch the guy. See now. Oh, oh Jeffrey oh, Levert. Levert with the first timer from the head of Schweinsteiger off the cross from Nunez beats Gunnarsson at the near post. And, and he Romana, finished that with power too. Yeah. Look at that. Volley right into the back of the net. Gunnarsson yeah, probably Gunnarsson. could have dived a little earlier, but I mean, he would have just gone over. Yeah, that's Gunnarsson kind of froze, not sure where Levert was going to put it. Yeah, and as a, as a keeper, there's not a ton you can do when they're sitting two feet in front of you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You just gotta hope your defense plays a little bit better than that, and uh, they didn't there. Yeah, it, I, I, I believe I've said it before, but I think that, like, 70% of the goals that we see from the Simulation Soccer League are goals that cross right in front of the net and redirect the keeper. There's so many of those that we see. As here's Romano on the attack again. to floor for Schweinsteiger. Cross for Levert. Oh, and that hit the inside of the bar! That was... something. That, that trickled across. Well, the not, Levert. Oh, not a, Gunnarsson had her feet inside. Oh, what's this? This is the replay from earlier. So it tickled the line. And it didn't go right out. It trickled across it. Uh, not across into the net of course but wow trickled along the goal line yeah and then Gunnarsson made the save on the shot from Levert and her feet went into the net I guess the ball did not follow <sighs> nervy few moments here for Catalonia who are who are now under a lot of pressure for Miki Romana yeah Romana made a couple of tactical changes trying to turn their luck around and so far, it seems to be working, though it is very early, and I probably just jinxed it. <laughs> and here with an interception, covered by Yarvinen and Busquets. Gets to the line, back from Nunez. In for Anavier. 
Shoots, and that's in. Easy go for Miro Schweinsteiger. Time has run at exactly the right time. I don't see this. was expecting a shot. No flag, and that's going to count. I thought he might have been a little offside here, but no. Uh, let's watch it back. I think the Gunnarsson was expecting a shot here from end of the air. Oh, come on. Give me the offside replay. Give me the offside replay. We're not going to get it, are we? Oh, here we are. Oh my Man. god, I don't know what I'm seeing, but he's he's very <laughs> on side. <laughs> yeah, I think I think actually there it was Inavier put the shot on the uh, or not the shot, the cross on the other side of budget buskets. And that threw Alexander Gunnarsson off. And uh throw directly to a corner. Wonderful highlight. Jeremiah's corner is in, and in the net, it's Powdered Toastman, the central defender. Ramana's up 3-0, less than 30 minutes in. Powdered Toastman really powered home this one. <laughs> it it kind of went by Vins Vins, who's still looking at the corner, wondering when the ball is going to come in. <laughs> oh, here's Maple. Postman missed. Oh, Kerrigan, and Kerrigan did get a finger. I to don't it. know. Yeah, he did get a finger to it. That, that I mean, that realistically probably should have dribbled in, but it did not. And now Levert comes out to collect that clearance. I, I think Kerrigan's a little glad it didn't, because I would have said he made a mess of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's made a mess of many of his uh, opposed shots lately, so he'll be happy that he didn't let that one in. Yeah, a little bit of a confidence builder for him. Down to seven point one so far. That's a drastic improvement over his uh, recent form. As Vin's corner is headed out by Tosin, and Akimoto's going to go chase it down. Back for Vin's again, who is on cross in off the corner. I yeah, think that did hit the bar. Incredibly close. I was wondering if Kerrigan might have got a finger to it. Didn't look like it. Certainly didn't catch across our commentary box, but uh, maybe someone's head can will say that he did. Well, on the uh, on our uh, aid visual aid down at the bottom of the screen, it looked as though Nunez actually got that header and tried to give it to Kerrigan, which, if so, made a mess of that. As Akimoto takes a shot that Kerrigan is able to save, and now Ramana will end up clearing it. That'll bring us to the half. Well, I certainly hope Nunez didn't head that back into his keeper's corner yeah, of the net. If, if he did that, I ugh, their manager will have words for them. But at the half, it's 3-0 Ramana. And uh, I don't know that 3-0 is necessarily a deserving total. I think that they've gotten lucky on a good number of their shots. Well, I they've only had defense, six, right? And they well scored on 50% of them. Yeah. With a 1.1 XG and only one clear-cut chance, yeah, definitely, uh, Catalonia being a little hard done by. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, AC Romana, seven shots in total, six of them on target. You cannot deny they've been clinical today. Yeah, yeah, and uh, only one more save made by Kerrigan than by Gunnarsson. Just the volume makes it so that that is a very different scoreline than you would expect. But Catalonia, to your point, prior to the match, 52% possession. And they've, uh, I think they should probably have a goal by this point, so I would not be surprised if we see them pick one up in the second half. So it looks like we will be having the first substitution of the match, or uh, not the match, of course the match. We will be having the first substitution of the day with J.J. Akocha coming in for Mojo Rising at that striker position. Yeah, an offensive change for Catalonia. Just looking to, uh, you know, get some fresh legs out there, really. Yeah. Get get a new look at the net, get some new perspective out there, because it really can't get any worse. Yeah. Yeah, Rising, formerly the super sub, now appearing to let Akocha take that role. J.J. Okocha, formerly of Montreal, actually, I believe. And, uh, I believe Seoul. Yes, yes, had a stint with Seoul. I, I believe it was Seoul that he was loaned to Montreal for. Ah, uh, that would make sense. Or I might have gotten that very wrong. 
God, the players' careers have been so interesting. There's been much more movement than I, I have initially thought there would be. Yeah, especially in the last few seasons, as there's an opportunity. Glenn Smart blocks, and Kerrigan will clear. And now Vins back to Busquets for Sherwood to Staines for Yarvinen. And for Maple, Toastman barely gets there in time. Maple cross. Smart blocked that. Glenn Smart's been playing very well today. He had a stop earlier in the match. I was very impressed by it as well. Yeah, Glenn Smart. Yes, I'd, I'd probably saved a certain goal there. I don't think it's beyond reasonability to say that. This here's Schweinsteiger. Getting to the line. Back for Jeremiah to DeFleur. He's going to go back outside, try to get across with Anavir and Levert trailing and puts that behind the net. It was a, it was a good thought and uh, certainly had the right angle, unfortunately. Just uh, not the best touch on the cross there and that go curves the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. And it looks like it is raining again, so perhaps that had something to do with it. Yeah, the ball is a little wetter. Vins in for a coach, it shoots Kerrigan, finger to it. And it is a corner. I thought a coach may have been offside, but plus the time was run perfectly. I was about to say, uh, he looked awfully offside there. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been uh, Nunez on the opposite end, must have kept him on. And there's a three ball for Vins. In for Buskets, and if the air is there, Nunez covering Vins now. And they're just going to play a 1-2 until something opens. Still playing a 1-2. Now they've brought Sherwood in. Nope. And Enavier eventually gets the steal. Through ball for Levert. Puts it right onto him. Shoots and Gunnarsson tips it high. It's going to be a corner for uh, AC Romana. And that's, that's good for good news for them. Kills a lot of time as all the players have to make their way back. Yeah, absolutely. And There's while a, 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 a three nil lead is certainly a cushy one, there is still thirty minutes to play and Catalonia by no means have looked like the worst team at this point. No, certainly not. And here's Akimoto with a clear shot. Kerrigan blocks smart puts it out. Okay, I think it's uh, fair to say Kerrigan now having the game of their life. And they are now going to get immediately scored on. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. Sherwood. <laughs> you made me uh, really nervous, man. <laughs> what was uh, that? What a mistake that? is what that was. <laughs> that was your highlight. Oh, no. <laughs> uh. you just oh, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Catalonia on the attack again, and that would have been a very good through ball. But Schweinsteiger puts it on for Levert. That's too far, and Gunnarsson will pick it up. We'll restart I can't here. believe what I just watched. Oh, my word. Um, I think the pitch is really Yarvin. wet because everyone's falling over over there. Yeah. A coach of through ball in the net if he's on. He is not. That I was, was just a about really to say he is. Good that catch. was really delayed. That was a really good catch. Oh, Ooh. yeah. That was tight. Again, Barely offside. Smart with the save there. It was him that uh, that triggered the offside trap. It was Toastman. Was it? I thought it was it Smart, was, last defender was, there. It was the back foot of Toastman, I think. Oh. Oh, well, that's uh, certainly a decision. And he's off again, I think. It's in, but I think he's off again. No, no, he's on. No, he's I think, on. I think they're going to call it on because Glenn Smart, me, he didn't make a mess of it. Coach went through the back of him. Oh, that is barely on side and just chips Kerrigan. And this could be the beginning of a catastrophic collapse. They did lose 5-3 after going up 3-1 last week. So, um, notably, our, our line judge has much better decision-making than our referee. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly so. Schweinsteiger heads that out. A momentary pause. 
<laughs> don't think our line judge has missed a, uh, uh, an offside call yet, but uh, certainly our referee looks like he might have missed a yellow card there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. That, that certainly looks suspicious, but what do I know? I'm up here in the booth for a reason. I, uh, I'll tell you what I know, Laser. Typically, when you go through the back of a player and foul them, <laughs> that's a red or yellow card. <laughs> or at least a foul, you know. I don't think you play advantage at that point. <laughs> Here's an opportunity. Levert on the wing for DeFleur. DeFleur looking for a good cross this time. Puts it back for Jeremiah, who puts in a cross, and that is over from Levert. Eastern Mountain definitely have slowed down in this second half, in, in my opinion, offensively. Yeah, definitely. But uh, honestly, when you score three in the first half, you don't exactly need to score very much more if you play oh, it well. Chance. Levert! You said it and he scored. It's Levert making it 4 1. Well, I mean, you certainly don't need to, but I think he'll take it. <laughs> yeah. That puts Levert one behind Ricky Bobby for the Golden Boot Race. That's. Yulishin missed the tackle, missed the interception. Uh, and yeah. Lever able to get through. I think Buskits thought that uh, Yulishin should have, would have, and could have had that. And uh, and that's why he kind of let off. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah. Just kind of kind of summarizes the match uh, for Catalonia. It's been uh, one of those horror shows. Nothing's done right yeah. for them today. Oh, there's an errant pass. Oh, this might not be good. There's the long clear. But it will be chased down by Ramada. If they don't give away possession here. Well, I mean, I'd love to see a second goal for Catalonia. It certainly feels like... Oh, it might be a hat trick. It's oh, a hat trick for Levert! Oh, my lord. Never mind. I'm going to stop talking now for Catalonia's sake at the very least. <laughs> and Levert now tied for the golden boot off of that. What an assist. Up to the floor, and that's just, I mean, wonderfully timed on both sides. Laid it right onto the foot of Levert, and Levert just beats Gunnarsson. It, I mean, that's the exact same shot that he just beat her on. And now, uh, not Buenos, uh, Catalonia on the attack. Oh. Akimoto stains Akocha for Vins. Vins into the box, long shot is high, that's going to be a goal kick. I mean, at this point in the match, you have to try it. Yeah, yeah. That's the worst Absolutely. thing that could happen, right? And you're down four goals already, so why not? Yeah, and undeservedly down four goals. That's, I mean, XG aside, which is always what you make of it, because this is going to be the last sequence of the match here. That's going to be the whistle. And it's, uh, it, that, Catalonia did not deserve to be battered this badly at all. Yeah, I think they were uncharacteristically poor today. Um, defensively, anyways. You can see the offense certainly had a good day. They had their shots, they had their opportunities, but, um, and, and they had the possession, 54% possession of the yeah. ball. They definitely had chances. You see, there are two clear cut chances, right? It's not that they didn't. Yeah. Just one side was much more clinical today. Yeah, and Kerrigan perhaps making up for some of the incredibly poor decisions he's made in the previous weeks. And again, the away team stealing a win here. That's, I believe, the second we've seen today. Well, I said it earlier, right? Kerrigan having the match of their life. And uh, 7.4, definitely, I think. A season high for them? Uh, no. I think they had a 7.6 against Hollywood. Well, that would make sense. Maybe. But it's, good. it's certainly their best game in a long time. It's looked like it, yep. And uh, a good win for AC Romano. We're going to get a flash of the end of day screen here. And, uh, yeah, things are shaping up. Yeah, it's uh the table has very suddenly quite separated. Yeah, it's, there's uh, there's a lot of gap now between first and that middle uh 
pack of four and fifth, right? Yeah. Six points between uh, <laughs> first place on 17 and uh, and fourth on 11th, right? So only Tokyo in that middle ground there. Uh, while it may not seem like a lot of six points is two games, we only have six left. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, certainly, mathematically, every single team is still in it. And with how volatile this season has been, I would not be surprised if we all end up within two matches again. Well, save Athena and I, but it's, I mean, it's, this has been one of the most exciting seasons that we've had. I think it's because there's so much parity in this league right now at the top of the table. And I mean, Hollywood being in seventh is really the biggest indicator of that. I'm going to revisit a point you made uh, earlier. You kind of, you, you said uh, Athena and I'm going to just go ahead and confirm uh, if they lose next game in Tokyo win, they are mathematically relegated. Uh, if, sorry, no, might not be next week. Uh, but what I'm saying is if any team or if every team has 12 points, Come next week, Athena and I will not be able to stay up. Yeah, they are. Uh, Did I, I mean, say if we you have don't... six games left? I, yeah, six? six games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I lied. Games. We're too early. It's way too early. Sorry. I got. Well, I got they're excited. not mathematically eliminated, but they have a minus thirty-one. That's almost four goals down a game. So uh, I don't think it's particularly likely that they stay up, but I think the point I'm trying to make is they gotta turn it around now. Yeah. yeah, if there ever was a time, it is now. And I mean, another note that I'm just now seeing: there's only two teams with negative goal differentials. That is bonkers. Um. Yes, but at the same time, I really feel like this has to do a lot with Athena's negative 31 goal difference, which means this that true. everyone at this point or has had a round at molly whopping Athena. Yeah, yeah, this, this is true. I think I think Buenos's total score against them this season is 12 to two. Maybe. And on that somber no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> what what a match day it's been lately. Like. That this is fun. Yeah, this is uh, it's certainly been a slate of games that I don't think any of them besides one went exactly the way we kind of expected them to. Yep, I I would agree with that statement. Oh no. I'm I'm confirming my theory here, and uh, it was Buenos beat Athena four nil in match day one, and then in the cup match they beat them seven four, and it was five one. So it's nine sixteen to five is their three game aggregate. Well, whoever wins the golden boot from Buenos Aires has Athena to thank, or at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it's I don't believe that there is a Buenos player that is in the top three Torres I don't think so I think it's really? 44 with nine and then Levert and Bobby tied for 11 I could well, be mistaken because Torres did get one today but I'm not I don't know and yet Buenos Aires hit top side at the end of our uh, match day Absolutely. Eight. yeah very very much a team effort from them so far this season and uh still anyone's game it's gonna be a extremely thrilling final six match days and i mean i'm pretty sure we're going to be looking at confirming the relegation and the promotion races in the final match day of the season yeah i think we'll have it end of next week for sure yeah but i think that is all for us today excellent get match of day uh excellent day of matches um i don't have anything else to add because i cannot keep my thoughts straight so anything else for you tvc uh, that that's it for me. All Thank right. Thank you for and... joining and uh, hanging on if you've been around for the entire cast. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, signing off. I've been Laser. <laughs> it's TVC. And we'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs>